Hey internet, this is Matthew Montgomery. I'm not gonna show my face right now because it's ugly. I'm just kidding. You know you love me. But no, but um, seriously, um, I've been looking back at my other videos and I was just thinking, you know what? I got these pretty damn good tutorials, but no one knows how the hell to run Sigwin through the command prompt. We know how to set it up like that. People who probably go in there and look through it all, uh, that's awesome, but still, some people are like, how do you do that? I'm typing in these, I'm typing in what, what you're typing in, um, it's just not working, right? So I'm going to show you how to um, get SIG1 to run through the command prompt. All right, for starters, let's bring it over here. Okay, click start. My computer, right click. Properties, all right? So right now we have properties right here and then you go to advanced environment variables okay if you don't have a path variable right you click new and you name it path okay and then you say c dot backslash whatever you want that, that creates the path for the command prompt saying okay if I can't find this command here I'm gonna look some other places to see if I can find it okay for starters Here's my Android NDK. Let's go all the way back. First off, you make your path to wherever your um, your SIG1 is. F for me, go to my computer right here. Okay, local disk C, SIG1. That's uh, that is the normal uh, where, where wherever you install it. That is normally where it is. Now Sigwin is huge. If you just got downloaded Sigwin and um, and it's saying your downloads about 28 or 30 megabytes, you're not downloading everything. You need to go back through there and make sure you download everything. I've had instances when that happened to me, and it's like print F, WTF, man, what is that, right? So make sure you download the full package. Just create a path to your bin, c slash Sigwin bin, and then. Say, make sure you do the semicolon um, before each uh, new path um, so the computer knows hey it's a new path so let's make sure it's a new path so after you got your path set up right here you go into your command prompt run CMD alrighty so far, I got document C slash documents and settings Matthew Montgomery. Okay, that's the wrong directory. So let's do CD, CD, CD. Okay, never mind. Sorry, just wanted to do that. Okay, so now we are in the C drive right now. So if I say CD, um, this is the directory. I'm telling it to where to look. So I say CD. Um, what is it? Sig one backslash bin. Alright, so now I got my SIG1 bin library. Okay, starters, it all depends on which SIG, SIG1 you have. I got the 4.3 and whatnot. So, if we this up and um, it, G++, of course, that's your next thing. And it's, I hate this mouse sometimes. G make Okay, here it is, GCC-4, okay. So in order to do that, you say, type in the command called copy. If you type, type it in and you just press enter, syntax of this command is incorrect, okay. So in order to do this, you say copy GCC-4.exe, okay. And you say GCC.exe. Uh, what this will do is it will take your fourth version uh, this is the updated version, and copy it, and then override it over the G, uh, over the main exe. So once you do that, you say yes, and basically you have it correct. So if you want to say cd, um, well, actually, you know what? I don't want to do my C drive because I don't have much in there. G. Um, let's see. Music. Okay, this is my right one. Okay. So we're going to say CD Sandbox. Okay. So when you type in GCC, it should pull up GCC no input files. 
that means that you have GCC uh, installed into your command prompt correctly. You don't have to know. You no longer have to go into the batch uh, command and start writing out everything. Uh, personally, for me, I don't like the batch very much. Uh, it looks weird compared to the command prompt for me. Here is the batch right here. Um, not too much of a difference, but to me, I don't like the dollar sign. Yeah, it's just it's just per personal taste. If you know how to do the batch, you can do it. Um, so if I do, all right. So I got some mains in here, and so if I type in main, uh, prints out one, of course, because that's the way I got set it up. But that shows how you're able to make your command prompt. If you need any more help, just um, send me a comment or anything else like that and I'll try to help you out as much as possible and if you have any helpful comments or anything else else like that videos um, please tell me um, because of course uh, I designed them to kinda uh, attack the beginners you know kinda deal um, new blood yes no but um, I made them to, uh, for beginner users um, basically what off what off of I've learned. Um, I'm also going to help help y'all out with uh, trying to make do a make file. Now, make files are interesting. I'll get into that later on. But um, people who want to know how to, how to use use a make file, um, I'm gonna have a video up about it. So if you want, you can subscribe to know whenever I put that up because make files are a pain and not everyone goes into them. Uh, I got a huge make file that does everything that I need it to do. Um, basically, I just um, I say, what is it, gmake dash f, and then make all dot make. Basically, and I say what compiler I want to use. If I want to use Borland, I use B, C for uh, clean, and then G for GNU's, and M for Microsoft's. If I just do that, it'll do them all perfectly well, and it'll also output the direct with with the directories. So. More on that later on, probably next week or tomorrow. It all depends on what I feel like doing because, yeah, I got a game to make. I gotta start working on our AI for a game engine, and I still got CS230 to do. I hate his instructions. They're complicated. Well, they're contradicting to me. I don't know. They're they're not they're not dumbed down to what I like them to be. Cause I'm stupid apparently. But oh well. Alrighty, so that's going to be the end of the video.